What's up guys, this is Understanding Jiu Jitsu with DCD. In today's match we have Marilla Santana, who is the competitor in blue, and we have Felipe Pana, who is the competitor in white. Both these guys are two of my favorite competitors. Uh, Marilla Santana is very well known for his pressure passing style and his different single leg X and X guard attacks. And Felipe Pana is very well known for his spider guard, lasso, X guard as well, and different kind of like floppy, long step style passing. So let's get right into it. And right off the bat, you can see how Marilis Santana is very, very low. Now he knows that Felipe Pena is going to pull guard and he's going to, and Marilis Santana is staying very low so that he's able to enter into his guard passing right away, as you can see, which is very, very nice. So let's just rewatch that really quick and, and kind of see what goes on here. So Felipe Pena pulls in right away, you see Marilla grabs his grip here. And he's already going to start stepping over and start passing to his right side. Now, Marilla Santana is a, is a different style competitor because he passes to that right side. Normally, uh, most jiu-jitsu competitors, they, they prefer to pass to their left with the right leg forward, but not Marilla, which I think is a very unique characteristic of his style and of his game. And I think, honestly, that's one of the big characteristics of what makes him so effective at this highest level. Okay, so let's keep going here and see what happens. He's going to step over and he's going to force it to the over under position. And you can see how he's already trying to cover over the knee line. Um, now, when you pass any guard, you have to first pass your opponent's foot line and then knee line and then hip line. And then then you're finally past your opponent's guard. And as we can see, Marilla has already kind of passed this foot line here. He no longer has to do or worry about this foot. Of course, this foot will come into play later. But for now, he's only passing to one side. So that's why he only has to uh, only has to pass those three points on that one side. And now he's already starting to reach over the knee line. And as you can see, he's already over this knee line here. And he's really clamped, really tight to the, to the person's body, really trying to force himself into the into the position. Now, the goal from a classic or standard over under position is to get high up on your opponent's uh, hips and then get your head on the side of your opponent's uh, body, this side. So if he's passing, because he's passing to the right currently, he wants to get his head on that opposite side, on the left, and then force his opponent's hips to that other side in order to flatten his opponent's hips and back on the mat and start walking them to the other side. And then it's very, very easy for him to just pass around to this right side. So that's kind of the idea of the over under pass. And that's kind of the pass that he's mainly using um, that you're going to see him mainly use in this match today, okay? So he's constantly pushing forward, and Felipe's doing a great job by defending, um, just pushing on the face of Murillo. Now, pushing on the face is a good counter to the over-under position, but it will leave you uh, susceptible to a pass that we'll see Murillo attempt here in just a second. Um, when you push on the face of your opponent, you're being, you're almost overcorrecting in a way. You're, you're overcorrecting so much that it's going to be easy for your opponent on top to switch the other direction. And that's, that's what all high level passes are going to do. They're going to switch to the direction in which you're not defending. So we'll see how Marilla does this in a second. See that constant push, face push. It's really, really annoying. And that was a beautiful transition. Let's, let's just watch. This is what I was talking about a second ago. Okay, he's taking it and his switch of the hips and of the, of the kind of, he does like a shrug, a side shrug in order to get around the body. One more time here. See how Felipe is so, so overcorrecting in this situation. He's overcorrecting so much, defending the pass to the right that he forget about, he, that he forgets about, or he just accepts the pass to the left here. A nice switch there. And he's almost, and then uh, Marilla's gonna use this in order to end up in a better position. Now let's just go ahead. He's actually gonna use this in order to end up into a better position, which is this kind of butterfly passing position. I like to call this position an over, over position because it's very, very similar to the over under. All, most of the concepts in regards to passing are the same, but you're just over your opponent's hips and you no longer really have to deal with that annoying leg that you have to deal with in the over under. So it's a very, very powerful, highly recommended this position. And the match is gonna stop here. Okay, and I'll show you guys how to move forward from the over, over, uh, in this next little video sequence we have. I'm just gonna go ahead and skip forward here. It's just a lot of, of uh, banter. And I'm not gonna say classic Felipe Pena, but he doesn't wanna give back the position that Murillo had, which is a smart strategy. So if you're in a tournament and you wanna be a little bit sneaky, I mean, why not? Why not, you know, when there's resets, there's always gonna be some sort of controversy. Try and get, try and get the best that you can from the reset. We're just discussing here what's going on. 
All right. So before we before we go into what Muriel is about to attempt to do, I want to show you guys kind of what what is he attempting to do in his mind right here. So right off the bat, when you have your your head on this side, when you have your head on this side, you're going to do the exact same thing as before. You're going to try and clear this leg, and then you're going to start forcing those hips to this side once again. It's just like an over under position, but you're over the leg already, okay? See how he already starts? He already starts clearing the leg and he enters into almost a side smash position here. Now this is a really, really strong position, this side smash. And when you're in a side smash position, it's perfect because your opponent's body ideally, ideally from the side smash, your opponent's body is you're, you're twisting his spine basically his legs are on the side and you're kind of doing like a twisting motion that's what you're attempting to do to the spine at the moment um really does not have a full side smash but he's entering to it so he's he's doing the 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 first part of the twist which is the leg part and hip part see how he's moving up the body trying to get that chest on chest and Felipe does an excellent job with his butterfly hooks lifting him out of the situation which is one of the main defending motions for defending the side smash Let's just watch this one more time. Felipe does a great job lifting his hooks. And one problem with this position here, uh, when you're going for the side smash or any of these smash attempts, you always wanna be over your opponent's knee with either your chest or your hips, ideally your chest. If this knee line, for example, if this knee line is on the outside of my body, I cannot smash that knee. I have to move that knee to the center and then start using my chest to force it to that other side and then I can really start applying pressure and smashing my opponent. And Felipe doing an excellent job, always constantly trying to lift Murillo into, uh, into X guard positions. Let's just watch this here. And this is a really, really good concept for beginners, is when your opponent is attempting to butterfly elevate you into single X positions, you need to be very wary of this. You need to be constantly using leg pummels in order to get those inside controls once again. Let's just watch, sorry sorry for the stops here, I just want to make sure you guys are seeing that his right leg now is going to try and leg pummel out of the situation or else he would get put in the singular exposition. Look at that leg pummel there and he kind of falls and, and resets. So it was a great attempt by both both competitors to, to do some, some positive work. And we see how uh, Felipe is trying to, trying to make multiple controls before he enters into a guard. When, when you're in a seated position like Felipe is now, it's a great idea to try and get a collar or a sleeve or double sleeves and then pull your legs onto your opponent so that you can kind of access four points of control right away. And what I mean by four points of control is having everything active, not only your hands but also your feet all over your opponent's body controlling them. And you see how once again Marilla steps in with that left leg forward rather than a right leg forward, which is a different kind of a, a, a leading position. And now you see, uh, before we keep going, um, Felipe is in kind of a low knee shield style position. Now, why is he not playing a, a high knee shield style position? It's because of this grip here that Murillo has on the collar. Because it's a cross grip, he's able to use his elbow to keep that knee position of Felipe very low, okay? And you can see how Felipe has a, has a grip here on, on Murillo's sleeve. He's gonna be using this collar and sleeve position that he has. You see this, this is just a classic collar and sleeve knee shield position, knee shield position, which is an excellent position for beginners, uh, all the way up to highly advanced competitors. And what he's gonna be attempting to do, as you'll see here in a minute, he's gonna be attempting to force this sleeve underneath the body of Murillo and start lifting him overhead, over his body, so that he can start grabbing and entering once again into these single leg X positions, okay? So that's kind of the goal in Felipe's mind. And of course, Murillo's goal is always to just put pressure forward, start moving into different side smash or half guard uh, situations, okay? And we'll see here that, that push pushing entrance that I was referring to earlier. Murillo is staying very low and back with his base because he knows Felipe is very well known for this style of entry into single X. Murillo right now is just constantly trying to cover those knee lines and start entering into those over, over, um, over, under, and half guard situations. And here's that overhead attempt here. And if he, if that was a nice attempt, and if he had gone a little bit earlier, maybe he would have lost position, but I think right here, if, if, if Felipe had switched from his, from Marilla's sleeve grip 
to that leg and started kicking Murillo over in this direction, he would have been able to enter into a strong X. But Murillo, of course, he defends very well, and it was not an easy thing to do because, of course, Murillo, as he was being lifted overhead, he started scooting his weight back, scooting his hips back in order to prevent that sort of elevation and entry into the single leg X. And Felipe is still playing a really good uh, collar sleeve knee shield. He eventually lets go of the, the sleeve. And let's just take a look, quick look at this, this half guard position that now Murillo has. This is a really unfair half guard for Felipe. Felipe no longer has his leg trapped in between uh, Murillo's leg. That, that means that Murillo is basically free for when he wants, he's free to run around to the side and start passing, okay? So we'll see how he implements that here in a second. And now we're in this kind of over under brother situation, or I prefer to call it actually the lap, lobster claw position. It's where your opponent's shin is trapped, almost like an over under, but it's trapped in between your bicep. Um, and your opponent is very, very powerless in this position and isn't able to really create any force to push you away. And once again, it's the same concept, which is over under. Over under. Rilla's goal is to put his head on that other side hip and start forcing his opponents to the left and then start walking around. Flippe being a little bit lazy here with his defense, maybe looking at the ref. And this is an excellent run around here. And that's mainly, he was able to get this run around because he was not trapped in the half guard, right? Because, because this foot here is out and this foot is, excuse me, because this foot is out and it's not trapped inside, Marilla is easily able to just run around here. Watch this. He's gonna switch the angle and he's just gonna run around. It's a great, almost near passing attempt, but Felipe does an excellent job with the guard retention. And this is a great example. I'll, I'll stop and show you guys what happened there. That was really neat. So you see how uh, Felipe recovers guard and he throws his leg over. Now this is a, once again, kind of an overcorrection. It's not a bad thing to overcorrect sometimes, but it is gonna leave you vulnerable for different attacks by your opponent. And Murillo is gonna use this kind of overcorrection and he's gonna start going for a stack pass attempt. Now in this stack pass attempt, because this leg is over, this hand is free to start looking for this, this far side collar and looking for a thumb in grip. If he's able to, to get that thumb in grip and start lifting uh, Felipe's hips in the air, in the air like so, he'll be able to put Felipe in a very, very strong pass, uh, stack pass scenario, okay? So we'll see how this didn't go exactly right. So see how he reaches for that collar and he starts lifting those hips. What he should have done in that scenario, he should have, it's difficult, of course, but he should have grabbed with his, he should have used his hand to grab under the pants and keep that collar on that side and start lifting this, these hips up in the air and then dropping your chest or his chest rather behind his opponent's lower back. And you can start putting that forward pressure forward and start really putting pressure and finishing that stack position. But Felipe, of course, defends very well and is able to bring his hips low to the mat and not allow that sort of transition. And now Murillo in this position, I believe, is just kind of staying calm, uh, collected, and starting to work once again into these over-under positions. Because from this stack pile position with his head very far forward, it's not so easy to do much of anything. It's more so of a resting or kind of thinking uh, position. And it's very tiring for your opponent as well because he really has zero attacks from a position like this. And what's really nice about uh, Marillo's game is it's it's very easily replicable. It's not easy. It's not easy to master, of course, but it is it's easy to replicate and and start practicing his style of passing. He's staying nice and low here, and he's going to allow this pummel to come inside. And when he allows this pummel to come inside, this is a great tip for when you're when you're in the stack pass position. You can sometimes allow your opponent to pummel inside because that'll allow you to start walking over that side of your opponent. For example, because this, this hook is now inside, he's now able to start cleverly moving to the side and getting over that knee line once again with his arm. And then he can start once again entering into that over under position and start forcing his opponent's hips to that side and then start once again running around to the side and passing. So we'll see how he implements this here in a second. So now that he, he's allowed that pummel to come inside, uh, he's going to start using that in order to enter these over-under positions again. Look how he's turning this pummel into a, an over-under situation. This hand here, very soon, is going to start reaching once again for this thigh and pulling that leg down so that he can once again climb over that knee line and get closer and closer to his opponent's hips and start really putting pressure, start really passing. 
Because in this position, it's 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 difficult to pass. Because once again, I told you he's not over the knee line of of his opponent. He has to get over that knee line somehow. And most all passes, this is the case. Look how he's grabbing the thigh, pulling it down to the ground. And this was a nice transition um, by Murillo uh, right there as well. We'll see what he did. See how Felipe attempts to, to almost off balance him with this butterfly hook? See, I think this butterfly hook was a mistake because it elongates uh, Felipe in this situation. Look how look how Felipe's leg is now very, very far away from his knee. And there's always a good rule in Jiu-Jitsu. If you can, keep your knee close to your chest, especially when you're on bottom. Because if your opponent is able to elongate your legs or, or take your legs away from uh, your chest, it's much easier for him to start entering into those side control style positions. This is a nice, really nice leg pummel to jump around to the side. And this actually allowed Murillo to get that leg on the other side of his body. Now that that leg is on the other side of his body, it's going to be even easier for Murillo to start putting pressure in this direction forward, turning those hips of, of Felipe to that other side and passing. Felipe doing a good job here defending with the sleeve grips. It's always a great idea when you are in these over under or, or double under style stack positions to get those sleeve grips. And you saw that, that transition right there. That's a really, really vital transition that Marilla just did. So he's going to inch up even farther. Felipe let go and he reaches even higher on the hip. This is a mistake by Felipe. Um, now that now that Marilla is higher on the hip, it's going to allow him to pull himself and stay even more stuck and kind of compact and really start forcing those hips to that other side. This is a, now a relatively favorable position for Murillo. And Felipe doing an excellent job with the hand on the face. I mean, it's it's honestly horrible. This is this is actually one of the main reasons why I stopped doing over under passing is because it's gonna it can fuck up your face, honestly. It can mess up your face, excuse me. And this is a really neat transition. I'll let it play here for a sec. But let's just watch this transition real quick. Look how he throws it over. And now Murillo is going to use that against him in order to enter this over-under brother or lobster call position once again. And then forcing once again into this size mass position. Look at this. This, this is a, once again an overcorrection. And Murillo is taking advantage of this overcorrection and using it to his advantage. Look how he, he, just, he just starts turning his body and forces that head once again to that side hip. And that's going to allow him to start really putting pressure and really forcing those hips once again to that other side. As you can see, this is a common concept that he's constantly using in all his passing variations. Now he's really trying to walk around. And now he's really entering into the side smash position once again that we talked about earlier. And this is a slightly better position than before. But once again, Murillo is a little bit low on his opponent's hips here. Ideally, his shoulder would be much higher near, near Felipe's sternum. And then that would allow him to once again get that kind of or to finally get that kind of twist of the spine that I was talking about that really makes your opponent powerless. And Felipe does an excellent job using his hooks and using his hips to elevate and to really get his knees out from that, that horrible position. Because like I was saying, the knee line is pretty much is everything in this style of position. And this is a nice, a nice underhook here that's allowing Murillo to keep his base back and it'll turn into a higher underhook here very soon as you'll see. And now Murillo is entering into his 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 kind of over over uh, half guard style passing. That was a night near leg pummel attempt to get out. And now I believe Murillo likes to clasp his opponent's legs, kind of to like settle down the position and and get ready to start moving. And as you can see, this is not a classic uh, head and arm style half guard pass. Murillo's head currently is on that other side of, of Felipe's body, and this is a near side underhook. He's currently attempting to use his head as a far side underhook rather than using his arm. And using your head as that far side underhook rather than your, your, your far side arm uh, is going to allow you to use your far side arm to start pushing down that, that leg that's going to give you trouble when you start attempting to go to quarter mount in positions like this, when you start advancing basically. Felipe doing a good job with that sleeve. In, in this position, Felipe is in a really, really horrible spot. His whole back is on the mat, and Murillo is not square to, to Felipe's hips, which is always a good key as to when you're in guard to keep your hips square to, to your opponent. 
and and fl- now Marilla is just easy easily able to start incrementally move forward or in farther and farther forward. And yet, as you can see that hand on the knee, that's that's when uh, Marilla is thinking about uh, transitioning to these quarter mount style positions. And now Marilla has that 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 uh, shoulder on the sternum that that provides a lot of pressure and puts a lot of pressure on Felipe. It makes it very difficult for him to do any sort of bridging or any sort of elevation attempts. Now we have a better view of, of this angle here. And, and Felipe in this position, what's Felipe's goal? Is His goal is either to bridge Marilla out of position and, and maybe end up on top or to get his knee free once again, get that knee line free. It's the same concept. When you're passing the guard, you want to get over the knee line. And when you're defending the half guard, you want to like escape your knee line from the position or from underneath your opponent. Free your knee, basically. Look at Murillo constantly in this kind of diagonal pattern here. He's constantly forcing diagonally. Now, why is he doing this? Um, this is gonna not allow Felipe to do any sort of really strong bridge and throw him off the position. And it allows him to constantly force his opponent's hips, once again, to that other side, uh, which is gonna be necessary for him to complete these future passes or pass attempts. Felipe doing a great job bridging, extending away. Marilla pops his head out there, staying nice and tight to the hips. And now this next transition is really, really cool. So when Marilla likes to start going for for different transitions or different uh, movements or progression, he likes to lock his head, legs in this in this style of position. Now this this keeps uh, Felipe from from being able to push him off of him and being able to free that knee line. And we'll see what Marilla does here in a second and I'll explain what goes on. Now, did you guys catch that transition? It was a really, really subtle transition, but it made all the difference. And I use this all the time as well. Now look, so he, he locks his legs, okay? And he's gonna reach for the cross face. And in reaching for the cross face, in reaching for this cross face, it's gonna open up this underhook uh, right here and that underhook is going to allow Marilla to start really forcing to these quarter mount and, and heavier pressure style positions This is an amazing transition Let's watch one more time that transition See how he's about to reach he locks his legs first of course locks his legs reaches and it goes under amazing transition That's gonna allow him to really start looking and getting a strong strong uh, near side underhook, which is, in my opinion, even stronger than that far side underhook. And now, once again, you see how he's walking Felipe's hips in that direction. Now he's going to start bringing that knee over and entering to these quarter mount style positions. Felipe doing a great job bridging. I believe Felipe is a little bit bigger uh, than Murillo in this situation. I believe Felipe is maybe. Um, maybe a heavyweight in this case. He's very, very tall. But this is a younger Felipe. And remember, this is 2013, okay? Just so you guys know. And I mean, Felipe, once again, being a little sneaky. And Marilla finally gets his grips back. Or some grips back. And because of the reset, Felipe is able to recover. You know, it's sad that that's kind of the case because he was pretty much dead for rights in that situation. See how Marilla keeping that constant down, downward pressure. His head is currently on the hip, on the hips of Felipe, keeping them pinned. And Felipe, once again, is always constantly trying these different elevation attempts. He's constantly trying to uh, force Marilla's grip underneath him and using this grip to elevate upwards and forcing into different butterfly or, or rollover scenarios. It's an okay defense, but it's, it's a really hard technique to go, especially to do, especially against somebody who knows how to pressure pass well. And now you can see Felipe has a, a low knee shield style position. Okay, and this is going to be a big major problem in the future for him. And it's going to allow Marilla to, to kind of take advantage and enter into a side smash very quickly. So you see, he gets back to that low knee shield. And because his legs are open in this scenario, Marilla is easily able to step over into this side smash again. Let's rewatch this really quick. This is really neat. 
So Felipe bridges and gets that low knee shield, but because his legs are currently open in this scenario, it's gonna allow Marilla to use his left leg to just easily step out of the half guard or almost kind of slide over right into a size position and right into a really, really strong size position because he's already gonna have his chest over that knee line of Felipe. Amazing, amazing transition. I like this transition a lot as well. Look how he just covers that. And now this is really bad. Let's, let's look at this here. Um, let's look one sec real quick back. So he steps over and now we can see, now we can see this twist of the spine that I was talking about before. Now we can see that Felipe's legs and, and spine is kind of like this. Like that's kind of what's going on. Maybe not like that, but, um, let me try and explain here. Like his, his knee is pinned here. Okay. And then, so this is on the side and his spine goes up. And then now Marilla is forcing that back to the mat, okay? So his spine is kind of like that in this situation, which is going to make him very, very powerless and not allow him to, to really do much of any sort of elevations that he's constantly attempting to do. See how he, um, Marilla almost steps over there? This is my favorite part of the match. My favorite part of jiu-jitsu is, is kind of the cool leg work that you're able to do when you're smashing your opponent. Look, he's trapping the leg and jumps over one more time. There. I won't stop it this time. One thing to note about this leg work as well. Um, one, one thing to note about this leg work as well. Sorry to stop again. Is Marilla's left knee is a little bit open, which is allows him to trap those legs of his opponent a little bit easier. And now you see Felipe bucking and, and bridging constantly. Excellent bridge, excellent turn. And now Marilla is easily riding his opponent. Look at this entry there. Boom. One more time. See how he rides Felipe up? Felipe's doing a good job defending, but he uses that space inside and puts in that little mini truck there and already starts attacking the back. Really amazing transition to the back. And now one thing you'll note about Marilla's game is rather than rolling through to the back attacks, Marilla actually prefers to kind of roll halfway and then he starts going right back into his pressure passing system as you'll see here in a second. Now, right now in this position, Marilla's constantly going to be looking for this cross face because he's going to want to be forcing Felipe's head to the other side, which will make uh, either taking the mount a lot easier, or you'll see here in a second how rather than going to the mount, he's actually going to use, now that Felipe's back is off the mat, he's actually going to use his chest behind Felipe's back to force him uh, to show his back even more and then allow a very easy back take. Now, if Marilla did want that mount, he would be reaching higher and higher for that cross face, once again, twisting the spine of his opponent, which would allow him to, to free that leg that's inside. And now he's got this gift wrap position. Now, this is a very, very strong position. Let's go ahead and watch this again. See how he goes around his opponent's head with that arm, and he makes a Kimura grip, makes a Kimura grip, and then he pulls right into the position. Really excellent, excellent stuff. And now he's right away going for the choke in this scenario. And then he moves, switches to the armbar. And it seems like Marilla prefers the armbar over the choke. I'm not sure exactly why. Maybe the, I, I think actually maybe the reason why as to why he's going for the armbar rather than the choke in this situation is because there's, there's just maybe short time on the clock. Or maybe he just feels more comfortable with the armbar. And one thing that's cool about Marilla's, uh, attack here for the armbar is that he's constantly grabbing this his opponent's pants now when you're in the armbar yourself if you can you can switch with the right arm inside and the left hand on the pant it's a great idea because it's not going to allow your opponent to bridge and and kind of do the classic uh thumb down rolling escape that you see that's uh, often taught when you're dead for rights in an armbar and one thing that's really nice about uh marilla's position right now as well is he's able to just use his his forearm on his opponent's bicep and it's almost like a bicep slicer and it's really really difficult and it really starts to weaken uh, your opponent's uh, grip or kind of rear naked choke grip and makes getting that arm bar much much easier so that's a good tip for when you're getting that arm bar you can start really start leaning his weight to the, to the left being very patient here in this situation which is another great great piece of advice to always be patient patient in these kind of situations um, you're, you're, you're winning. There's no reason to go crazy. And he switches, starts extending away, and he reaches through and gets the armbar. 
really, really beautiful transition. Let's watch that one more time real quick. Reaches through, grabs the fingers and pulls it back and extends the hip. Really amazing stuff. Now, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this match. I hope you saw all the amazing little details that were in there. So much to learn from in this match. And I learn something new every single time I watch this match, even though I've seen this match, say, like 15 times, okay? So I really, really enjoy uh, making these videos for you all. Please let me know how you how you like them, if you like the music uh, in the background, um, any matches that you guys would like to see in the future. Uh, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Oof.